Hello and welcome to In Conversation With, the monthly podcast series brought to you by the team that produced the Global Cosmetics Newsfeed. 2022's theme is Future Proof. This month's topic is professional beauty, and I'm your host, Siobhan Murphy. 24 months after the first global lockdown, how is the professional beauty category capitalizing on digital technologies whilst balancing sustainability issues and competing with a new kid on the block, personalization, metamorphosizing into a sector fit for the 21st century consumer? To help me answer these questions and more, it is my pleasure to introduce this month's panel. Hello to Miranda Matthews, Managing Director, UK and Ireland at Treatwell. A warm welcome to Sharon Nykesa, General Manager at OWE, United States. And welcome to Oded Haas, CEO of MD Algorithms. Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much. Great to be here. Thanks, Ron. Great, Great to be, to be here. here. Miranda, let's start with you. In 2022, what are the key social drivers currently influencing the future proofing of professional beauty category at Treatwell? Well, there's um, there's a couple of things that really come to mind. And I think um, if we're thinking about social drivers in terms of both societal and, and social, um, social media, I think we're getting used to really being served highly tailored um, products and services through uh, different channels, whether that be through Google, Facebook, TikTok, sometimes quite shamelessly relevant. <laughs> um, but these are really shifting the way that we um, we see and, and view products. And, and when that happens, we're also able to to go deeper and and research what these what these brands mean, what their values are, what the ingredients of these products are. So both from how we're receiving these products and, and becoming aware of them and the research that we can do on them um, is, is a lot deeper than, than we've ever seen before. Um, also thinking about things even more through a booking lens or how we think about things that treat well, um, providing services, consumers really expect um, different treatment when it comes to booking reminders, personalized emails. So I can continue to see that in the future as well. And for always, Sharon? Yes, I, I, I believe the social drivers um, that are really affecting the trends, there's a lot more conscious consumerism going on. And, you know, individuals are, are thinking a lot more and being more mindful um, about having a more conscious view uh, on packaging and, and the purchases. Um, for example, I know a lot of more, a lot more people are, are you know, if they order packages from, you know, shipping companies, um, they might wait uh, to actually, you know, wait for their purchase um, to get them all at once rather than in multiple packages. And, you know, so be mindful about, uh, about the way that they shop uh, and more conscious is really um, driving as well as, in, and for us, really the big thing that we're, we're really happy about, there's a big movement on people being conscious about cutting down on single use plastics and, and having things such as reusable, um, you know, reusable water bottles or, you know, cutting down completely on plastic water bottles or opting out of that straw, so to speak. So for us um, at OA, you know, we're, we're really expanding upon uh, offering things such as refill, you know, refillable products to, to meet that demand. Um, you know, single use plastics. I mean, they, I think there's an article in the national geographic that says that single use plastics account for about 40% of the plastic produced every year, you know, items like food wrappers and plastic bags, you know, they have a lifespan of just mere minutes, you know, to hours yet, they go on and persist in the environment for hundreds of years. So, you know, we're really, we're really committed uh, to utilizing glass and aluminum packaging and uh, trying to obviously meet those consumers where they're at. And at MD algorithms, Oded. One of the big uh, transitions we think uh, from what we have seen was due to COVID. So uh, people were much less inclined uh, in our case to go see a dermatologist. Um, and uh, we're looking where can we get a similar treatment or products online uh, with the personalization that the doctor can provide. 
And uh, with our acne treatment brand, MD Acne, for example, uh, since the first lockdown, we saw a surge uh, in orders, and um, which made brands online uh, really uh, in a situation that they can help people uh, that can't see a doctor. And by providing a personalized treatment that gets direct to your doorstep, um, people really saw that for the first time, you can get a very high quality treatment online um, personalized to your needs. And uh, it really has become uh, more and more mainstream uh, since then. And we think that now with AI, um, it's really going to be one of the big shifts uh, in the next decade. Indeed. So Miranda, talking about AI, in 2022, what are the digital drivers currently assisting the future-proofing of professional beauty category at TreatWell? I think there's some really interesting things happening. And luckily with us, we have so many um, amazing partners, both in the UK and Ireland, that with this, with uh, the amount of data that we have um, with what people are looking for and what they're booking, we're really able to be uh, to be smart in how we serve that back to people to provide a really um, a really great booking experience to suggest treatments that we know they'd be more inclined to book than others. Um, so it's not only on the customer side that we can provide data to help them have a better booking experience, but also on the partner side, if we know what people are looking for in different uh, geographic areas, we can serve that information back to them to suggest possibly new treatments or services that they could provide to, to their customers based on what we know people are looking for. And is data a key driver at OA, Sharon? Yes. Well, you know, we're in the process right now, even though this company has been around for several decades, uh, we're in the process of uh, really relaunching and launching into the States directly. And so although there's many things out there right now, you know, that are driving um, the future proofing at, from a digital standpoint uh, that affect obviously the environment and sustainability in general, such as mobile apps and cashless payments and and, and utilizing cloud storage to you know, allow companies to operate uh, on a paperless level um, you know, using things like cloud storage rather than materials that are toxic to the environment you know, that cannot be recycled. Or we're, we're really utilizing or trying to utilize as much technology as possible, um, especially when we're doing education. Uh, we obviously educate not only consumers, uh, but we also work in the professional salon and spa categories. And um, we utilize a lot of online education platforms to educate the salon and spa partners out there. And we're increasingly um, utilizing, you know, our, our different portals and websites um, and, and things, especially when we're in on location, uh, you know, utilizing airdrop and allowing people to follow along on their mobile devices or iPads. So we're doing everything we can um, to mitigate, you know, the effect on the environment by using uh, digital. And obviously MD Algorithms is technically a digital company. How is data and education affecting you in 2022? Yeah, uh, for us at MD Algorithms, AI is really the, our bread and butter and, and the core uh, piece of our uh, company. So um, the reason we founded the company is that 90% of people uh, that struggle with skin and hair problems never see a dermatologist. And um, with AI, uh, we've built uh, an app that you can simply take a picture uh, of your skin on hair and the AI model actually analyzes it with a similar accuracy to a real human dermatologist. And based on that, we can provide a personalized treatment. Um, and that really helps, uh, you know, hundreds of millions of people that can simply not, af can't simply afford a dermatologist visit. Um, and really by doing that, we can really democratize uh, access to a high quality dermatologist treatment uh, that is affordable uh, to the majority of people. Indeed. And Miranda, at TreatWell, what are the environmental drivers currently impacting the future-proofing of the professional beauty category? Water is definitely a key issue with your partners. 
Yeah, so we're increasingly seeing the topic of sustainability on everybody's mind, and like we were speaking about earlier here. And we, we actually did a, a survey ourselves at Treatwell. We did it with about 600 consumers. And within that survey, we found that over 80% of respondents said that they will opt to buy cruelty-free and vegan products, which I was like, I knew that number was high, but over 80% was was uh, really surprising to me. And then over 50% of, of people in that same survey said they were happy to spend more on sustainable products as well, which I think is just is wonderful to hear that people are willing to make that trade off um, because we know that that's all necessary. Um, in, terms of, in terms of plastic waste as well, some amazing things happening um, in, this, in, in the beauty industry. I've seen um, some recycling boxes at, um, at Space NK. I know they're doing a great program to bring back plastic products. And then there's another company called Green Salon Collective that's doing some amazing things with hair salons. Um, we're actually excited to start a, a, a partnership with them this year as well. So they actually collect not only product waste, but also um, collect hair from hair salons to then use this to clean up oil spills within um, within the water. So it's, yeah, lots of great things happening and we're excited to be a part of this moving forward as well. Oh, way. They are an environmental company. As you said, they are decades old. What is impacting their future proofing in 2022? Yes, and, and that's great. I, I really loved what Miranda had to share as well. Um, that's so important um, to, to do more of that in the industry uh, globally. And so OA, you know, like everyone, um, we have really more or less completely eliminated our dependency on fossil fuels and natural resources that it can be you know, replaced by renewable energy sources. Um, our, our corporate headquarters, our Artigano, um, our Spazio Academy are all ran on renewable energy sources, photovoltaic panels. Um, so we're, we're, we're doing everything we can to um, lessen our impact uh, and, and you know, really operate in a carbon, carbon neutral uh, way. Um, I think it's, really important, you know, companies and people in general are striving to really build their lives and their companies on a more sustainable, you know, low energy <clears throat> um, way uh, to ensure that they're maximizing the life cycle. And so, you know, for us, um, everything that we do is built upon uh, our, our manifesto that's called Agricosmetica. It really supports our commitment, you know, to growing zero mile plants and flowers on our uh, Ortofacina farm. Um, you know, we're, we're really focused on really not being just a brand, but a set of values and educating people on how to live, you know, a healthier uh, environmental lifestyle. So um, really everything we do is all about operating in that way and educating people how they can themselves um, lessen their impact on the environment. Uh, a lot of things we use, such as the packaging I mentioned earlier, which is 99% plastic free, uh, focused on glass and aluminum, you know, where a lot of individuals can easily recycle those. Um, and as you know, they're infinitely recyclable. Uh, but some people will also uh, give those items a second life and use them for other things throughout their home, which is great. And it's really supporting, you know, our circular sustainable value system. And MD Algorithms, Oded, what are the environmental drivers currently impacting your future proofing? For us, uh, from the moment that we founded the company, um, we made a commitment that all of our products will be both clean and sustainable. Um, it's definitely important to us and also uh, for the new generation uh, of consumer that all of the products uh, that they use uh, will, first of all, we with recyclable packaging uh, so in our case you can recyclable recyclable everything from the packaging to the products uh, themselves and also clean um, which means that they're all sulfate free paraben free um, and and really use ingredients that are both good for you uh, but also for the environment um, and as we've grown um, we are seeing more and more at scale how much uh, the, it becomes more and more important uh, year over year. Um, and also um, really helps, uh, I think, the culture of the company. Uh, because when 
people are working on brands that are actually doing good for the world. Uh, it really helps both from, of course, marketing and products, but also uh, internally. And talking about doing good, Miranda, what are the regulations that are currently aiding or abetting the future proofing of the professional beauty category at Treatwell? I think there's a, a few things to touch on here. Of course, um, we still have some COVID uh, related measures in place and it differs um, from country to country at this point, but really we need to make sure that we're st continuing to stay on top of this and that all staff are trained to carry out the right cleanliness and hygiene practices with all of our partners. And we're providing the right level of transparency as a booking, booking platform to, to um, clients as well. But outside of COVID, um, there, uh, the hot topic right now um, in the industry, both for UK and Ireland, is uh, is on injectables, really. So something that I know the British Beauty Council is also doing a lot of work to to address and to handle in the right way. And we've seen over the last 12 months um, more regulation come into place around age restrictions. So I think it's 18 years old that you have to be now to um, to be able to to get a treatment like this on on your own. And there's still um, a lot of discussion happening around um, who's able to provide these treatments. So we, we think about this a lot at Treatwell as well and really strive to provide the right um, standards ourselves. So we, may, we need to make sure that all the partners that we work with are registered doctors, nurses, or pharmacists um, to provide injectable treatments on our platform uh, because we want to make sure really the, the health and safety of our of our clients and users are, are at the forefront here. So um, yeah, I think this is going to continue to be something that's widely discussed um, in the near future. And then something something on ingredients too. I think um, just having more transparency around product ingredients is uh, something that will continue to be a focus um, for companies as well. And for OWE, Sharon, what are the regulations that are aiding and betting the future proofing of your business? Yeah, so this is really important. You know, OA is um, a family-owned company in, in Italy. And, you know, they adhere to the European standards, which is far and away superior to the current standards and regulations here in the United States. Um, so, you know, for me, I really would like to see increased regulation here, uh, you know, in the United States. Some of the laws that are overseeing uh, ingredients in cosmetics, for example, are you know somewhat like 80 years old. And so I'd like to see more focus on having um, regulations that are consistent you know across the board. And also, you know there's that would help a lot of times we talk about you know brands or maybe just greenwashing messages in general. It would really help to have um, a set of standards, you know, that people can really look to and trust when it comes to uh, giving, uh, you know, consumers the transparency that they need. Um, we are very committed in our packaging and our labeling um, to, you know, in, on each and every product to put the exact amount of ingredients that are natural and organic and biodynamic derived. Um, so on each and every bottle or tube, you can turn it around and you can see, oh, this is 97.8% or this one's 99%. So we're very, very uh, committed to full transparency on every level. Uh, something else regulation-wise that is tending to be um, a challenge really here in the United States uh, is state by state, there are laws that could prohibit uh, the action of refilling. And we are we know that consumers you know really want to have systems in place where they can refill their glass bottles and refill their products at their local salon or spa and some states it's wonderful they will allow that and that's something that is absolutely helping the environment and the you know, sustainable community in general and some states are still behind so uh, that is really something that we would like to bring more attention to as we continue to launch in the United States. It might be helpful to have, you know, a, a sort of like an organic uh, campaign, you know, involving the community to really contact their, their legislators and, uh, and get these laws updated so that we can have more of a sustainable um, future. 
Yeah, interesting. The United States have so many varieties of regulations for each state. Correct. And at MD Algorithm, yeah. what are the current regulations aiding and betting your future? You have two different sides, really. You have the data, the AI, and then the product. Yeah, that's correct. So uh, from the product for both of our brands, uh, MD Acne and MD Hair, uh, we provide uh, FDA cleared uh, medications and are doing rigorous uh, lab testing for every product uh, that we provide. Um, and of course, from uh, the data side as well, um, we've built a lot of infrastructure in place to make sure that the data uh, stays private in our system. Uh, so just for example, um, when we built our image analysis that analyzes uh, the images of the, the hair or the skin, we built it in a way that it can run on the device itself, on the mobile phone, without needing, needing to be sent to the cloud. Meaning that uh, we can analyze all of the data on the device and it stays private uh, and is not even sent uh, online. Another aspect, uh, that we think it's very important uh, in terms of uh, safety uh, is also uh, the education of the customers on how to use the treatment in a safe and proper way. And uh, to aid that, we have actually uh, providing all of our customers unlimited medical chat support. So we have in-house a medical team of registered nurses and dermatologists and uh, we have a chat support that is open 24 seven. So every time we have a customer that has a question uh, about their skin or hair, we help them, we guide them, we give them tips, recommendations, and even sometimes simply ask them to upload their pictures so we can analyze them and manu manually if needed. And uh, aiding the customers through the treatment uh, is as important as also providing uh, the right treatment in the first place. And just to ask, uh, by holding the image on the phone, does that mean that you don't have to abide by each country's regulation in terms of cloud safety? Yeah, that's a great question. So because we run it on the phone, uh, it's really, uh, it's okay with all regulation because it doesn't even get to the cloud. Um, so when the user deletes the app, the data is deleted as well. Um, of course, if the user wants, um, they can upload that, the images, and sometimes they actually send us pictures because they want to ask specific questions about them. Uh, but uh, it's, it's very important to think as more and more medical solutions are transitioning to become AI based, that the technologies will be built in a way that if, if the user uh, is interested in that, it can be completely private and run on the fo phone itself uh, with full control on the privacy of the data. Interesting. And finally, Miranda, predictions. What will the professional beauty category look like in the next 12 months? Well, I'm very, uh, I'm very hopeful that we'll continue to see sort of the same types of advancement in sort of science, technology and innovation that we have up into this point and into the future. And I know that I can definitely say for uh, booking online, this is one of the shifts that we've seen from COVID that is, is here to stay. Um, everyone went online to buy their groceries and also went online to book their their uh, their beauty and their hair. So yeah, we're, we're definitely going to see that continue into the future. It's easier for everybody, less time consuming, better for staff planning, um, better consumer experience really um, all around. So yeah, we're looking forward to um, how that continues into the future. And I also think there's just been such a great rise in social consciousness around, like we we're talking about earlier, sustainability and also diversity and inclusion. So we've seen um, some big regulation changes, um, both in, in the UK and elsewhere in the world in terms of how we treat Afro and textured hair and the standards that we now have um, in, in that sense. So really looking forward to us just being, um, being better on all fronts there as well. And your prediction, Sharon, the professional beauty category in the next 12 months? Yes, well, you know, there's a big movement um, that is is going on. I think it's coined 
uh, it's called condensed beauty and it's it's been coined by foresight foresight consultancy the future laboratory it's all about brands um, discovering new ways to amplify their results and efficacy of beauty formulas while reducing product waste and so for us at OA, we will continue to you know, manufacture our products in infinitely recyclable glass and, and aluminum materials while providing condensed product formulations. So you don't need to use as much as you're used to. A little goes a long way. And um, I think that's going to be very helpful. And that's something that we're doing now and we're focused on for the next um, foreseeable future. Uh, the thing that I'm hopeful about, uh, there's a few things really, you know, brands I hope will continue to make, um, not only make commitments towards decreasing their carbon footprint, um, but actually take action on doing that because, you know, the consumers today, uh, they don't, they don't really want a commitment, you know, they want the brands to start making action, uh, you know, taking the leap and doing it instead of dragging it out. Uh, so in the next 12 months, I do really hope that sustainable um, sustainability in general will feel more accessible uh, to all individuals, to all across all demographics, you know, with local recycling options available on the rise and just more options in general uh, to use safe and sustainable products. So for OA, you know, our commitment and really it's it's kind of our, our goal really uh, is to participate in, in educating or re-educating in some cases, uh, the consumers as well as the professional industry of beauty. And you know, our goal is to, by doing that, and by offering ways for individuals to use items that are more recyclable and 99% plastic free, you know, that's really, that's really our continuous purpose-driven mission. Um, it's an it's a never ending cycle for us until we can get to 100% plastic free. We're going to continue to work towards that, educate consumers how they can reduce their plastic use, um, and you know, obviously, in general, really that's that's our continuous purpose. And your predictions, Odid? Yeah, our main uh, prediction for the next months and also the next decade that um, it's really. You know, the thesis that um, we founded our company and the algorithms based on is that beauty and dermatology are going to be much more uh, technology enabled and AI based. And um, we'll think that uh, it's about time that people can get uh, the treatment, the quality of treatment that they deserve um, also online via AI. Um, millions of people really can't get today this treatment because of inaccessibility uh, to dermatologist offices. Uh, as I mentioned, 90% of people will never see a dermatologist. And uh, as AI and technology gets better exponentially, um, we'll see more and more uh, companies trying to use AI to really provide very high quality uh, of personalized treatment and it can get customers can get directly uh, to their doorstep um, and text, thanks to the technology and automation, these solutions will be much more affordable and also much more effective. And with that, I would like to thank my guests, Miranda, Sharon and Oded for joining me today and to you for listening.